Hey guys, my name is Jake. Video, I'll be giving a really brief overview of Logic Pro X's plugin, the Retro Synth. This video will be a non-technical explanation of the synthesizer, and at I think at the description box, you should have some presets that you can download and tweak or use for your sessions. So. Again, I must say this is not technical because I am personal, uh, personally not a very technical person, so I can't explain it that way. So here is the retro synth, and the reason why I'm choosing to explain this synthesizer rather than the ES2 or Alchemy is because I think it's a great introduction to synthesis for beginners, and I consider myself to be a beginner. So <clears throat> at first glance, this interface might be a bit intimidating. But let's divide this into two sections, the top half and the bottom half. The top half is basically the source of the sound and the filter. The bottom half is anything that shapes or adds motion to the sound, and that's how I like to view it. Although over to the right, uh, the top right area of the synthesizer, you have two effects available, that's the flanger and the chorus. So let's go to the top left, which is what I call the source. The middle section is the filter. In the top left source section, you have four options, analog, sync, table, FM. Now, if you've seen other tutorials, they'll call this an oscillator. This is like a sawtooth. This is a square. You move over to the right, you turn the knob. It's a pulse wave, and then you can blend the two oscillators. I don't want to call it an oscillator. I'm just going to call this a sound source. And the reason for that is because when you click other options, like FM, you no longer have oscillators, you have a modulator and a carrier, and that's a lot to take if you're a beginner. So let's just call this the source for now. It comes, uh, the synthesizer comes with four options, and they're, each of them are a bit different. I'll quickly browse through each one. Analog is basically subtractive. This is what it sounds like, without just the source alone. Sync is like analog, except it has a different relationship. One is a master um, oscillator, the second one is a slave. I actually don't know what the hell that means, but this knob is pretty important. That's what it sounds like. The next one is called Table, which is a wavetable synthesizer. Like analog, it comes with two um, oscillators, except the difference is, if you click over here, you have custom oscillators. And this is what it sounds like. And then you have FM. FM is a bit difficult. I find it difficult to grasp because it doesn't follow um, the same mes uh, methods as these three types of synthesis. You have a modulator and a carrier. The modulator affects the carrier. I also don't know what that means, but when I opened up this synthesizer and whenever I try to work with the FM synth, what I do is I, uh, I press Alt, Alt or Option, and left click each bar, and that should give me a plain sound. And that's what FM synthesis sounds like. Okay. So let me just recall the default settings. Now you have the filter. So <clears throat> the filter basically covers up or uh, accentuates certain parts, certain sounds of the source. And what I mean by that is it just cuts or it lets certain sounds pass. And I'll demonstrate. So if you're going to make a bass line, you don't want all of the source to be heard. You want to cover up some of it. And you want to probably go down an octave. Okay. And then you have these effects, chorus, and flanger. 
both of them basically thicken up the sound of the source. So you go from the source to the filter, and then you add the effects. This is just the volume, and you have an optional uh, sine wave that you can add. I don't really use this a lot because I'd rather make a separate synth with a, a sine wave. I don't know why, that's just my thing. Okay, over here, we I'll skip glide for a bit. You have LFO, vibrato, filter envelope, and amp envelope. Think of LFO and vibrato as being the same. They make things move or wobble. The envelope, think of the filter envelope and the amp envelope as being the same, and they shape the sound in different ways. So, <coughs> Sorry about that. Let's take a look at the LFO first. <coughs> now the LFO is linked to the filter through this LFO knob. LFO means uh, low frequency oscillation or oscillator. I don't really know why, but it makes things wobble. So if I was doing, if I held a sound and I was doing this, <laughs> The LFO allows you to do that without having to click the filter and move it left and right. So this knob over here is the intensity, and this is how much the LFO will affect the filter. You have a rate, and when I pull this up, you have the effect of the LFO. Now if you click sync, it's basically mapped to a musical grid, so right now it's in 1.8. I can bring it down to 1.4. You get the point, so it makes the filter wobble. Vibrato is pretty much the same as the LFO, except it affects the oscillator, so it affects the pitch. So the LFO affects how much the filter, uh, the way the filter moves, and the vibrato affects the way the pitch moves. And you have the same relationship, except that vibrato is controlled here. So I'll just, okay. You get the point. Now let's go over to the amp envelope. You have basically three points. The second point in the middle is called Decay and Sustain, and the first point is the Attack and Release. Now, I found the envelope to be the most difficult to understand, so <clears throat> I'll explain the amp envelope as plainly as I can. It basically tells you how the source should move, the volume of the source. So if I'm making a pad, the easiest way to demonstrate it is using something extreme. A pad slowly, you slowly hear it, and it's really in the background. So you're going to pull up the first point because you want the sound to gradually move in, and you'll move the decay and the release. The release is to let the notes ring after you let go of the note. Hang on. Okay, now if I bring this back to the starting point, it, it starts sounding like a lead or a bass. Now, <clears throat> it's a bit difficult for me to explain the relationship between the decay and the sustain, but I'm going to give you an example. So. The decay is basically the this point, the middle point, going left and right. The sustain is this point up and down. I hope that helps. But if I wanted to make a pluck, the sound needs to quickly dissipate. So the decay would have it would literally literally have to decay. So let's make the decay short. And now you have a pluck. So 
something like that. <coughs> now, the sustain is basically all about holding the note. So you can see here, if I hold the note, you'll see the G highlighted. The sustain determines what level the volume stays at after the decay is done. If I don't have any sustain and I hold the G, which is uh, this note, the G note, which is supposed to be highlighted, you'll notice that you don't hear a sound after a certain point. So the sustain allows you to keep that sound on while you hold the note. And the release is basically uh, how long the note takes to disappear after you release the note. So if I increase the release, you'll hear it stay longer. So that's the amp envelope. That's really useful for shaping your sounds. Well, it's, it's the primary way of shaping your sound, and it really allows you to build context as to what sound you're making. So if you're making a bass line and you want it to be smooth, you're going to want to have quite a bit of decay and sustain. But if you want to make a plucky bass, you're going to want to have little to no sustain and a short decay and probably some release, just a bit. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the filter envelope is exactly the same as the amp envelope. The only difference is the amp envelope controls the volume, but the filter envelope controls the filter. And that's a bit useful because it kind of, I feel, adds more texture. So here's a, here's, without the filter first, I'm going to make a pad, right? So we already covered this. We increase the attack to make a pad. We could put a bit of release and the decay and sustain. I think it's, there's a lot of liberty there as long as there's sustain. Now, <clears throat> you can add more motion, like the LFO, the filter envelope is controlled by this knob in the filter section. So this is the filter envelope, you put in your parameters like you would with the amp envelope, and you determine the intensity over here. Now, there's a little difference, you see that little arrow, god damn it, wait, you see that little arrow over there? That's basically the middle point. The LFO doesn't have that. The middle, the middle point means if I go this way, the filter moves that way. And if I go left, the filter moves the opposite. Just tinker around with that. So anyhow, we made a pad. And I'm going to go back to point zero, which means there's no envelope action occurring from the, uh, yeah, there's no action occurring from the filter envelope. Now, that might work in some situations. In other situations, you might want to add more texture. And now I'll pull the envelope knob to the right, and I'll copy the amp envelope and just change things a little bit. And I'll bring this more to the left so that it gradually opens and you can hear the context clearer. And without the envelope, so the filter envelope literally opens up the filter. It allows the source to be heard in more frequencies. Okay, so how do we decide which option, which synthesis, uh, synthesis mode is the best? Frankly, that's up for you to decide. Just play around. And I will leave some presets for you to download, and I'll preview them here right now. So this is what I've been able to create with just the synthesizer. I'll turn off the plugins. So that's
that's an FM plucked bass. You have a, okay, this is a joke. Go on a diet bass. It's just a, a thick bass, but my jokes are really bad. But this is what it sounds like. Then you have this, LFO wubby, wubby bass. You have a pad. And another pad, which you'll see that I move from analog to table. Okay, and then these are keys. We have a sneaky lead. And a just a sub. You'll probably need headphones to hear that. So those are just a few presets I made using just the retro synth and I'll make sure that they're available for download. This is just a really quick overview of the synthesizer. And one more thing, you also have the settings. This just controls your voices. So if you want if you're making a bass, you'll want to have mono on. You can detune, you can do stereo spread, voice stacking. There are better tutorials that explain this more in depth. I just wanted to give you a quick overview to get you started uh, with a synthesizer pretty damn quick. And yeah, that's about it. So I'm gonna quit this session. And again, the presets should be available. Just a quick, when you download the presets, this is how you download them. You open the finder if you don't see your Macintosh, Macintosh HD. You go to finder, preferences, Make sure you're in general and just click hard disks. Then you should see it on your desktop. Click over here, go to users, whatever your name is uh, for the Mac that you're using. Go to music, music, audio music apps. <clears throat> then go to plugin settings, scroll down to RetroSynth and you should be able to drag the file in. Alright guys, take care.